Hello everyone, welcome to Going for Goldbridge. I hope you're all doing very, very well. A lot of you have been asking me to do one of these, and I know I was doing them daily, but I think it's, you know, what what are we into this? Three, four weeks into lockdown now, and I think it's it's mentally exhausting for everybody, and I think you've got to have your own coping mechanisms, and I certainly have mine, playing FIFA every afternoon, doing the United Stand stuff, and I do enjoy doing these, but doing them every day, you know, you don't want to over-egg the pudding, it's like having EastEnders every day, keep it to a couple or three times a week, but um, I'm going to start off with a story, because I left my last story on my last one too late, I think the pedalo story is a classic, but it's too late in the video. So I'm going to get into this one. I'm going to answer a question. Um, we'll talk about the topical stuff, the lockdown, and where we're at with that in a moment. But let's start off with something a little bit... Well, you make your own minds up whether it's funny or not. So you might say it's a little bit sad. But anyway, I was asked, what's the, what's the most outrageous thing that ever happened to you when you were at school? And I think for outrageous, the interpretation in the dictionary is probably different to what I think. But outrageous to me was something that was ridiculously out of the normal that I always remember and think, wow, that could have gone a different way. And basically, we had this lad who came to our school. And I, I always get mixed up with school years now because they have like... I'm year, I'm 12, but I'm in year 14. I don't understand them. When when I went to secondary school, you had year one, two, three, four, five. They don't call them that now. Uh, so you're a first year, a second year, a third year, a fourth year, a fifth year. Then you went into sixth form. Fifth year, sixth form. So that's how, how I used to remember it. So in about the third year, so we would be about 13, 14, we had this lad come to our school in the September and his name was Bob. And um, I think his name was something like Bob Chung or something like that. And um, he uh, he was a funny lad, um, very intelligent, and uh, but had a good uh, personality about him as well. And I remember when when I first met him, um, he, he was in a different form to me. But we we, we met him at, uh, playing football or something, and uh, he was like, "I'm Bob, I'm from Western Supermare." And I was like, "Oh yeah, they were brilliant in the rugby." And he was like, "I don't I don't watch rugby." And I went, "Oh yeah, they're absolutely brilliant." So when did you come over here then? And he went, "Do you know where Western Supermare is?" And I went, "Yeah, he was in the rugby." And uh, no, he went, it's down near Bristol. And I was like, I've never, I've never heard of this place. And everyone was laughing. Like, I think, you know, in those days, um, it wouldn't be called racist anyway. And it certainly wasn't any intention of racist. But I was like, I don't know what Super Western Supermare is. And I think I, in ge geography, someone had to show me where it was. I was like, oh, right. And, and he did, he, he found it funny anyway. But obviously, Western Samoa had been in the rugby. But the thing is, he wasn't from Western Samaria anyway. He didn't look like he was from Western Samaria. He, I think he was. I think he's. Uh, I think he was like Cantonese or something like that. But uh, I'd never heard of the place Western Supermare, and because the the Rugby World Cup had just been on, I was like, he means Western Samoa, which he obviously didn't. But um, he had a good personality, and um, but th this is. I mean, look. I thought it was funny what he did, even though he got into trouble at the time. But I look back at it now, and I was thinking about it before telling you the story, and I was a bit like, hmm. Anyway. This was the 90s, and um, look, I, I've said this a few times, I think things that were said in the 90s can't be said now, and it's good. Um, you look at some old UK gold, Only Fools and Horses, The Office, whatever, there are things that are said there that are just not acceptable now. Even though they were said in a funny way, they are unacceptable, and that's the, that's the movement of time, that's the movement of society, and it's correct. When I was at school, because Bob was, um, you know, Cantonese and looked a little bit different to everybody else, he did get called, um, you know, you know the names I'm going to say. Um, I'm not going to say them because I I'm inferring to. Uh, I'm not going to say them, but you know what I mean. You know, he, he, he looked like he was Chinese. He got the shortened version of that. All sorts of stuff. And... Um, it wasn't acceptable at the time, but if you if you lived then, you'd know that it, it, it happened a lot more. Um, you know, it, it did. It did. And, you know, I've, I've, spoke, I've been open about this a lot of times. I think when these, especially people who are like in their 50s and 60s now, and they're like, oh, you know, it's totally unacceptable. Like they weren't living in that time then. It, 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 it It's not acceptable. But it did used to go on. Anyway, we were in a, a science class. And I didn't used to do it, but I'm just saying some people did used to do it. We were in a science class one day and um, these girls were basically winding him up which I have told you a story before about girls girls could be right bitches I got I got bullied by girls at school and people laugh about it but what are you supposed to do I was taught to, I was brought up not to hit or pick on girls so when girls are whacking you around the head with the uh, rulers and stuff what are you supposed to do it was it's bullying effectively anyway um bob was getting into this bit of a uh, uh, trouble on the other side of the class and you know there was no re 
Look, I'd like to say I walked over and sorted it out, but I didn't really pick up on it until it was getting quite late uh, on in the argument. And um, I found out afterwards, as we did, that what had been going on for most of the lesson is these girls who were sat in front of him at science. And he had a couple of mates with him. He's not on his own. Um, they kept turning around and, you know, pulling, doing things with their eyes towards him and, you know, basically being racist, uh, essentially, um, picking on him, chucking rubbers at him and stuff like that. And... Um, him, him being the person that he was, he didn't, he didn't take it lightly, and he, he started going, "I'll oh, f off, you fat bitch," to one of them, and you know, he started going back and forth. At which point, I, I did, I remember, is on the other side of the class, because what science classes were in benches, so you had bench one, bench two, bench three, and then the teacher at the front. You probably get about ten students on each bench so he was in the bottom right hand corner on the back bench these girls were in front of him and I think we were sort of on the back bench towards the left so quite a lot of uh, people between us but you started to become aware of it as you were looking down the bench and it was starting to kick off a little bit um, and, and, and then the next thing one of these girls reaches over and grabs his back and gets one of her body sprays and sprays all in it and then starts calling him well derogatory terms about oh look at how jack's bag smells and you know what in the context of what had been going on that was quite mild but it was going on between them uh, quite a lot and jack um bob's mates were getting involved in it as well and then the the next this just sort of pushed him over the edge and um he what what <laughs> what he did next was just um he, he reached forward and he grabbed this girl's head her hair pulled it back and just clamped it down from the bench like that pulled it back and went like that and she started squealing and squealing and squealing and um his mate next to him tried to release his arm and he was like i've had enough i've had enough he's just shouting over her i've had enough you fucking bitch you fucking bitch i've had enough i've had enough of you and he's got this pencil in his hand now not for one minute was he like over like that it was just sort of like a like a I think if he'd had a if he'd had a placard that said I'd had enough, he would have just been holding it. That's how he was holding the pencil. She's squealing anyway. Her friends are just backing off, making you know. I always think looking back, her friends could have just pulled her out of the way or grabbed his arm, but they sort of spread to highlight this thing that was going on to the whole class. Anyway, the the teacher comes over, who was probably I never liked this teacher. I'm not going to name her, but she was a bitch, and um, she instantly is just. You know, not perturbed by what's going on, she starts going in on Bob, saying, "Let her go, let her go, you vile man." You know, he's not a man for one, and everything like that. And um, she, they end up having an argument, and she's like, "Get out of my classroom! You're a disgrace! Get out of my classroom!" So anyway, the next thing, he lets her off, and he says, he starts going, "Do you want some? Do you want some as well? You fat bitch!" I mean, his only line was, "You fat bitch," which, um, which was. I, I wasn't laughing at the time. I think we all laughed afterwards that it had it calmed down. But when it was absolutely going on, your mouth was sort of like, this we're never going to forget. But what he did next was um, just the funniest thing. And I wish I'd done it because one of the lads next to him did it. It was hilarious. Um, he grabs hold of a Bunsen burner, <laughs> lights it up. And these Bunsen burners had a gas pipe of about that long. So he gets the Bunsen burner, holds it up and starts going, you want some? You want some? You want to the teacher who had come right to what she didn't like being called a fat bitch. She came towards him and to be honest, she could probably have put him in a headlock and took him out of the class. And I think that's what she was going to do. And I think Bob in his defense realized that that was going to happen and went too far, lit up a Bunsen burner and started waving it around <laughs> saying, do you want some? But then he started to get really empowered by this. And the teacher's like, everybody back off, everyone back off. And it's not a dangerous situation at this point, but she's like, everybody back up. And he's, he realizes he's got the upper hand. And he's like, you want some? You want some? I've had it. And then, it, then I mean, this is where I started to feel sorry for him a little bit, because I was like, you know, he had been being picked on all lesson. The teacher had took the wrong person's side because he pulled the, uh, the hair of this other girl down, who I think, you know, you should never do it to girls, but she was being a bit of a cow. Anyway, he stood there in this surreal situation with the Bunsen burner, and I wish I'd done this because it was just comic timing of the brilliance, absolutely brilliant. He's waving it around going, you want some? You want some? With the Bunsen burner, and he's not even got it on the full flame. He's got half the flame on, so it's only about that big, and he's going, you want some? You want some? I mean, realistically, you're not going to get apps torched it's not a flamethrower it's basically about as big as a match as a light or a match yeah so you could smother it you could literally just go up to grab it and whatever anyway he's like you want some you want some and um one of the lads just goes bob 
calm down. He's like, oh, shut up, shut up, I've had enough of it. And he goes, Bob, I'm going to stop this now. Oh, you're not, you're not, you're not stopping it, you're not stopping it. Anyway, just grabs the other end of the um, of the Bunsen burner, pulls the pipe out and turns the gas off and says, that's it, it's done, it's over. <laughs> that was it, it was done. And, um, well, I'd like to say he got kicked out of the school or anything like that, but he didn't. And I, I, don't, I actually don't want to say he got kicked out of the school or anything like that. I mean, in those days, I... I <laughs> I think he got a little bit of a telling off and he was back in the next class. So there was there was no fallout from it. The girls never picked on him again. Um, they were nice to, ni they were nice to him after that forever. And, and so was everybody else because I think he'd shown that he had a tipping point and he didn't want to be on the end of that point. But um, yeah, I mean, that's one of the most outrageous things that ever happened. But to me, I think you had to be there. You're probably finding the more entertaining part of the story was the leading up. But it was just that last bit where he's waving around this basically a large lighter going you want some you want some and this lad just comes up and goes calm down shut up shut up i'm not calming down and he just pulls the end of the thing and the gas goes out and the flames there and he's basically just waving around a bit of metal after that which is about that big um but yeah you probably get expelled for that now there'd be all sorts of problems for it but back in those days i remember a couple of lads going down the local pub when they were 15 i don't know how they got served got absolutely hammered and had to sleep it off in the headmaster's office um there was all sorts of fights that used to go on. There was people who used to attack teachers, all sorts of stuff. And, you know, they'd be back next lesson. So, uh, yeah, there you go. Um, in relation to the to the lockdown and everything, um, I am I think at the moment I'm just, I, I'm suffering with fatigue. I don't know whether you lot are. I am suffering with fatigue. I was talking to somebody today about this and I was like, you know, the first couple of weeks I'd watch the, the press conference that they do in the UK at five o'clock every day. I'd, I'd be interested in that. Um, I'd be like, you know what, I suppose, you know, like everybody else, there was a novelty value to having one walk a day, everyone together. And I still I still feel that. I still feel it's everyone together. And I still feel 100% that we've got to stay home, stay safe. We're all in this together. Um, but I'd be lying if I said I wasn't fatigued by it. Um, we're into it enough now to be used to it, but we don't know where the end is. And um, the positive is that we're three, four weeks in. We could be three or four weeks from coming out to some extent I'm sure we will be but I do just feel a bit of he like a headache t fatigue every day from it and um, look I'm totally aware of all the people that are dying and all the people are sick and this is why we're doing it and it's horrible but I'll be absolutely honest it is fatigue it is fatigue and it is relentless and it's difficult and you know I'm not you know I've always been quite open about depression on a mind level I think we always all have that but I can only imagine what it's like for everybody. And you know, we're, we're not we're not spoiled here. I mean, I, I was watching Good Morning with Piers Morgan the other day and he did it again. They had like Terry Waite and John McCarthy, the, these people who were held captive in the 80s, um, ho held hostage for years. And one of them was, uh, one of them, I think John McCarthy was um, handcuffed to a radiator for a year or two. And you've got old peers going, you know what, if, 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 if he can be handcuffed to a radiator for two years, I'm sure we can all just stay at home with the internet and TV for two months. And I just thought, you sanctimonious idiot. Like, for one, he was held hostage not knowing whether he was going to die or not. He wasn't being handcuffed to a radiator on purpose. He was a hostage from terrorists. Like, it's a bit different to being on lockdown because of an unprecedented pandemic for a couple of months where you can watch TV and that. But also, let's not diminish that. You can't compare those two situations. You might have somebody who has severe depression, severe mental health, anxiety, whatever, who, oh, it's just so, it's too simplistic to say, well, wow, if he can sit there um, um, handcuffed to a radiator for two years, you can stay at home for two months and watch Netflix. But that person's anxiety is just, is on ridiculous levels. Like you, you can't, you can't compare the two. It's, it's the whole thing that I hate, and I don't know whether he said it before, but I've heard people say it before about mental health, especially in males. Oh, just man up. I mean, that's the most insensitive, idiotic statement I've ever heard because it's not... You, you're being sexist for a start, but you're being totally sexist on a level that all men are the same with the same emotions and the same coping mechanisms. Some men can go and, and, and fight in a war in Afghanistan and survive on a, a bottle of water and, um, you know, leaves. For a month and some people you stick them in a room with netflix for a week um and running water and food and but tell them that they can't go outside and they're gonna go into all sorts of panic because everybody's different and you've got to be sensitive to that i just think a blanket statement of a short oh well, we can all do this for you know we're all going to do it we know we've got to do it but let's not um desensitize or 
you know, make out that it's a piece of piss because it's not. It isn't. It's a battle for everybody. And um, but it's a battle we must win because ultimately we've got to do this to make it easier for for those people who are trying to stop it. And, and that's the bottom line with that. Um, I can't see anything more than that. Let's take some of your questions. What's your favourite next se Netflix series to binge? Um, says DXN esque. Um, I've always been a massive fan of Ozark. I, I, when I watch Ozark, I just get into it. Um, but I liked Narcos. I enjoyed that. Um, Breaking Bad was good when I watched it. Uh, Mind Hunter was good. Um, I really have enjoyed The Safe and The Stranger um, UK um, dramas. Yes, I, I do enjoy Netflix, and uh, I, I can binge watch a lot of things. I liked that series about uh, Chernobyl. Um, uh, I don't know whether that was on Netflix actually I think it was but yeah I like all sorts of things um, when will lockdown end in your opinion says at football Ben um, I don't think it will mate you know uh, I can only be selfish in, in, on this and say what what can I deal with and I can deal with whatever's going to happen in relation to lockdown because it is what it is and we'll do what we do but I hope that we can come out in I would like to see schools and everything go back in June till the six weeks holidays in mid July. So that's six weeks. Then you've got the school holidays anyway, so you can lock down again if you need to. And if we need to lock down in September and October, we need to do that. I don't mind doing a couple of months on, a couple of months off. I think that's the better way to do it, but I would hate to think we're gonna be doing it for six months. So for me, I hope that by the end of May, and certainly by the middle of May, we're starting to go back to normal for a bit period of time, and then we go back to it again. And let's not be, f Look, let's not be scared of going back to normality because the reality is all these people that have been dying over the last week or so, these are people who caught it when before lockdown. So that shows you how rife and widespread it was in the UK that so many people are dying now who caught it before lockdown. So we can go back and that was that was normality. So we can go back to normality um, for a period of time and it should but as long we've got to just be uh, widespread testing needs to happen and i don't think we've got the we're in the position to do that at the moment so yeah i i would hope that yeah um around june time ever felt very lonely says clive wrote it loads of times loads of times and i think that's that's something you just need to be open about yeah loads of times um you know i've lived on my own which is very lonely um i've been in relationships with people where they've it's been a long distance relationship and you can be surrounded by your friends and family you can be down the pub on a friday night with your mates but the girlfriend that you want to be with is in another country and you feel ridiculously lonely even though you're surrounded because loneliness is based on what you what you need um you can have loads of people around you and not have the thing you need and that could be them living away that could be grief that could be lots of things so yeah i've experienced it and it's it's not e it's not diff it's not easy could piers morgan be our future pm says lee um he could i won't be voting for him and um What's your routine during isolation, says Mastermank. So I, I sleep, I'm, I'm going to bed later at the moment. I used to normally go to sleep around 11. At the moment, my routine is I get up, um, do United Stand in the morning, um, do stuff like uh, go on the walk with uh, uh, the kids, feed the ducks, etc. Lunchtime, normally do a bit more work. Um, afternoon, FIFA, uh, evening, more family time, 8 o'clock United Stand, and then start winding down, watching a bit of things with the wife and stuff and um yeah go to sleep about midnight and then do it all over again I, we do make our weekends a little bit different like we're on a, we're on a different walk a little bit more downtime a little bit less work etc because i think that's important because when we do go back to normal this day every bit every day is the same I mean, imagine how overwhelming it would be if they said everyone go back to normal you know a lot of us don't like this situation but imagine going back to normal being back on busy buses being back in in, in work taking kids to school going to the gym going to the pub, going to a restaurant, everything's going to be like, wow, this is, it could be quite overwhelming for a lot of people. Tell us more drunk stories, says Jan United. Um, I'll have to think about one for the next one. Do you think these unprecedented times may come to us more often or are we in one, will make the world think twice about what they do? Well, that's from Sunny. I've got to say that crossed my mind before as well. This, this particular pandemic, we could be dealing with it for another year or so, who knows? on and off like i say tap on lockdown off lockdown on who knows what's going to happen with it um but it used to say that in a couple of years we won't get another thing we've been close to this a few times with um ebola uh swine flu sars um and now we've had it with covid19 so who's to say another one won't come i think it's so important that so many of these things appear to have happened in these wet markets from china and you know once 
is too many times. Twice is ridiculous. And I think we're, we're rumoured to be on the third time now with this COVID-19. That's got to stop. You know, this is this that country's practices in relation to that have caused this. That's got to stop. And, you know, it has. It's got to stop. Uh, but will it stop? I don't know. You've got to look at where these are coming from, why these things are happening, and stop them from happening. Because we are vulnerable. And we've seen that worldwide. We are vulnerable from New York to London to, to, to Delhi to um, to China, you know, to Australia. We are vulnerable and we need to be uh, we need to be taking much more care. Oasis or the Arctic Monkeys, says LFC. Oasis for me. Oasis for me. What age did you drink drank, drink alcohol for the first time, says Mourinho. Um, God, probably 12. I mean, no, probably younger than that. I probably had a sip of uh, my, my grand's lager in lime when I was about 10, to be honest. But properly drinking probably started when I was about 14, going to parties and stuff. I mean, not every week, but just, you know. Uh, best Easter egg, says Neil. Um, I like galaxy chocolate, I do, so Mars chocolate. But I do like Cadbury's Ka- 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 as well. Biggest celeb crush now and as a child, says The Real Senzu. Um, that's a good one for everyone to get in the comments about. I would say that my biggest crush as a child was probably Kylie Minogue and... Um, the cast of Baywatch, not the males. Nothing wrong with that. No problem at all if you like the male people off Baywatch, David Hasselhoff, whatever. Not my cup of tea. Um, and there's no swimming trunks they could wear that would make it my cup of tea. But the female ones, El, El, uh, what was her name? Erica Eleniak? Yeah, I used to fancy her. And um, not not Pamela Anderson so much. She always was a little bit, of, even, even as, a, even as a, a lad of under 10, I thought she was a bit slutty. And um, yeah, I, I don't I don't like my women too obvious. I want to think that maybe they're only going to be with me, not that they're going to just go with everybody. Some people like that sort of thing, not not for me. So yeah, that, that but older. I mean, look, I'm a married man. I'm very happy with my wife, so I don't look at other women and have a crush on them. To be honest with you, um, and that is the honest answer. But uh, yeah, am I a wrestling fan? I used to be Liam Lance. I haven't watched it for years. I think the last time I really watched it was Wrestlemania, Shawn Michaels against Undertaker and Undertaker beat him. Thoughts on the Mandalorian? Says the Amiga, very good, very good. And do you think the lockdown will change how you viewed life afterwards, says George? Well, I think that's a cracking question and I think we'll only know that when we come out of it, won't we? Uh, We will. Uh, I don't know until we come out of it. Do you think we're all going to slip back to normal? There's going to be repercussions from this. We're going to lose money. We're going to be in a different, you know, world. We're going to lose people we care about or or people you know are. Um, We're going to know that we're vulnerable. Um, Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be it's going to be interesting. But I think it can I think we can come out stronger for it. We've got to. We've got to. We can't do all this and then come out of it like weak little mice. We've got to come out and, and, and learn the lessons from this. I mean, I think a lot of people want to be critical about how governments have, have dealt with this. Look, you've got Trump saying he's going to remove money from the World Health Organization because he's pissed off with how they've dealt with it. Um, but ultimately, the lessons need to be learned so it doesn't happen again. I accept that this is unprecedented. I'm not somebody who's going to go, we should have done this, we should have done that. I think we know we should have done this, we should have done that. But it is unprecedented. And maybe we should have seen it coming. But what we need to do is learn from it, the most of all. Anyway, I've got to do an 8 o'clock show at the United Stand. Otherwise, I would keep talking. Thanks, everyone, for watching. I'll speak to you all soon. And uh, thanks again for watching, as I said. And we'll be back with another one very soon.